Well, in the time domain, we were able to calculate V1 plus, the first positive traveling voltage wave, using a voltage divider at the generator. In that case, the switch had just closed, and so the impedance that the generator saw was just Z0, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. But in this case, we're in the sinusoidal steady state, so all the reflections have already happened. As a result, we have our generator and maybe some internal impedance and our transmission line. And so the since we're in the sinusoidal steady state, what the impedance that the generator sees is actually Z in, which takes into account everything to the right, the rest of the transmission line and the load altogether. Also, performing a voltage divider at the generator in the sinusoidal steady state gives us the total voltage phasor V at L, which is 10 meters, because that's the length of the line. So that if we do the, imp the voltage divider with Vn, we'll get the total voltage phasor instead of just um, V naught plus. Right, so we will get, we get V, we get, we account for V naught plus, plus V naught minus. So it, it takes into account both when we have the total voltage. So we'll see that in just a minute. So performing this voltage divider, we have VG times Zn at L over Zg plus Zn at position L the length of the line, plug in 10, and Z in at position L, the length of the line, Z is equal to 10 meters, is 70 plus J 30 that was given, ZG is 30, plus 70 plus J 30. And we can put that in and simplify it, so I'll say 660.2 at an angle 23.2 degrees over 104.4 at an angle of 16.7 degrees. So dividing that, we have 7.3 at an angle of 6.5 degrees. Now we have the total voltage phasor at the generator. So we still need to get V naught plus we can use the fact that the total voltage phasor at the generator is equal to both the positive and the negative traveling voltage phasors. That together they account for all the waves traveling on the transmission line to the left and to the right. Thus at D equals L the total voltage phasor is V naught plus E to the J beta L plus V naught minus E to the minus J beta L. And we can rewrite V naught minus. So I'll rewrite that in terms of the voltage reflection coefficient at the load times V naught plus. And we still have the E to the minus J beta L. On the left side, we can plug in the value for the total voltage phasor that we just obtained. On the right side, we can plug in the value we got earlier for the reflection coefficient. And on the right side, we can also evaluate E to the J beta L and E to the minus J beta L. So we need beta L, which is 2 pi over lambda times 10. L is equal to 10. And for lambda, we can, uh, oh, I put L there. This is 2 pi over lambda for beta, and L is equal to 10. So 2 pi for lambda, I can put in C is equal to lambda F. So I'm going to put in, because we know the frequency, and we know the speed of light. It's an air-filled line. So I'm going to have C and F here instead of lambda, and we still have our 10 meters. So now we can plug in our values. 2 pi, the frequency is 100 megahertz over C 
which is 3e8, about, and this will all equal 20.9. So finally, plugging in everything we have for we plugging everything into the expression we just had, we can solve for v not plus. We get the total voltage phasor, which we already solved for earlier, over e to the j beta l plus the reflection coefficient times e to the minus j beta l. And we can plug in values here now. So we have 7.3 at an angle of 6.5 degrees and e to the j 20.9 and our reflection coefficient, 0.17, e to the minus j, 20.9. And if we put all that together, we're going to get 6.2 at an angle of 69 degrees. So now we can determine the voltage maximum and minimum occurring along the line. So the max is V naught plus magnitude, which is 6.2, we just got that, times 1 plus the amplitude of our reflection coefficient, so that will equal 7.3 volt. And the minimum voltage will be 6.2 again, and times 1 minus 0.17, which is equal to 5.1 volts. And we've succeeded in calculating the maximum and minimum voltages occurring along the transmission line. Getting back to our design challenge, unfortunately Chewbacca only has the 70 ohm transmission line available for us to use. So we won't be able to use a quarter wave transformer with an impedance of 34.3 ohms to match the 70 plus J30 ohm antenna load to the transmission line. So instead, we're going to have to come up with another solution.